Welcome to Erotically Neurotic, a sexy book club podcast. Join us as we take a deep dive into the world of romance and erotic fiction and have candid and hilarious conversations about sex, sexuality, and hidden fantasies. Please note that each of our episodes will contain explicit content and language and lots of spoilers, so please listen at your own discretion. Now grab your books and vibrators and welcome to the club. Welcome back to Erotically Neurotic. Do you know what episode number this is? I do, for the record. I just pulled it up on my computer, so (laughs) I do. It's episode nine. Sure is. (laughs) I just want everyone to understand, it's not like I'm that stupid, but we record weeks in advance yeah. from when the episode then comes out. Mm-hmm. So I just can't keep the numbers straight. I know, because the same week we're posting Yeah, like we just a posted episode six. Yeah. But here you and I are sitting recording episode nine because yeah. we do not procrastinate. <laughs> so thinking of the timeline, this might be like a Christmas special. Oh, yes. This should be coming out. Oh, wait. Oh, November 20th. Oh, a Thanksgiving special. <laughs> <laughs> a little vampire on the side of your turkey. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Think about all that blood you could eat. <laughs> Honestly, guarantee there's a book about like Thanksgiving dinner blood. Oh, I bet it's like gobble her up or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you you should write that. I should uh, a Thanksgiving erotica. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna ask my. He fingered very her giblets. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm 100% going to ask my very, very secret Facebook group I'm in um, <laughs> if there's a Thanksgiving erotica. People have been posting looking for more uh, spooky, supernatural Halloween types lately, Ooh. so... <laughs> That's on brand. Okay, uh, do you want to yeah. explain what the super secret Facebook group is? Um, you don't have to say the name. Yeah, I won't say the name. Okay. Because that wouldn't be a secret. No, that's true. You guys who are listening know by now, I have found myself venturing into (laughs) some more taboo, let's say, Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. tropes. I prefer (laughs) open-minded. And I somehow found a Facebook group for people like me, although I'm at the... I'm at the bottom end, I would say, in my, hmm, you know. You want to clarify what you mean by that? <laughs> I'm at the, you know what, I'm at the starting line. There it is. I'm at yeah. the very, very, very starting line of being open-minded. <laughs> um, there are some other people who are just well past go, you know. They've <laughs> they've collected 200 and they are looping, you know. They're deep in it. They're deep in it. Yeah. Um, so that is the group I'm talking about where people have their specific needs Mm-hmm. And it's very helpful because you just post what you're looking for, whether it's a certain character or a certain trope or, you know, something as simple as knife play. You know, who knows? <laughs> and let me tell you, hundreds of comments. Amazing. Hundreds of comments. I'll bet it, I'll bet it makes you feel better because you're like, oh, okay, there's more of me out there. Um, I'm not the only one looking at giblet fingering. <laughs> <laughs> no. And things that I would never have imagined ever. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I'm like, wow, I'm vanilla. <laughs> Let me talk. I'm like, I am vanilla in my taste. Uh-huh. That's how I feel. Yeah. 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 Um, so of course, I'm going to keep that group a secret because mm-hmm. if that's something you're into, I think you'll find it yourself. <laughs> like I did. We're not your fucking guides. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to ask them and we'll keep you posted next episode if I find, um, you know, the, the giblet story. The giblet. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's get into our rose and thorn. Okay. Um, speaking of that, this is actually a different group I'm in, but <laughs> <laughs> related. Um, my rose is that I'm basically um, Facebook famous in this private group because there is a series I read where basically <laughs> one of the male leads, um, basically his only character trait was having like the biggest dick you could ever imagine, ever. Like thick veiny just huge and was a virgin because he girls were too scared to have sex with him sure yeah so that was pretty much his whole character trait and you know me I was just at a little cute family farm this weekend (laughs) with my husband and my one-year-old 
and I found the like largest zucchini I've ever seen. And as I hold my one year old, my, my one year old in one arm, and this I don't know eight pound zucchini in the other, all I thought was mm, size dick. <laughs> The character's name was Sai. So anyways, I wrote in this group, I posted a picture of it, and I was like, when you buy produce at the farm, but all you can think of is Simon, you know, <laughs> with a few emojis. Um, let me just tell you how many people now have uh, liked it. 95 <gasps> people have liked it, and 30 people have commented. Oh my God. So you know what? That's Are you a, viral? I, I'm viral. <laughs> um, that's, my, that's my rose. That's quite a rose. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I don't think you would like this book. Oh. I've definitely talked to you about it before, and you haven't really um, expressed interest. <laughs> I also just need you to remember, you read 14 books a week. <laughs> so when you when you allude to a book you've read before and told me about, that's one of hundreds at this point. No, that's true. Yeah. But sometimes I like to force Amanda to read books. I'm like, please, 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 please read this. This is not one I would do that. Thank you for not forcing your <laughs> zucchini dick book on me. <laughs> I like really wish that everyone could see the zucchini I'm talking about. Yeah. But you know what? We'll post it to our Instagram yes. when this is released. Oh, and that's then a good idea. For all of you who listen, you'll understand. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a real rose for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> any any thorn you want to complain about? <laughs> you know what? No, you know, obviously there's a lot happening in the world that is um very upsetting right now, but I don't want to talk about it on this podcast. Yeah. Um this is kind of our escape. Amanda mm-hmm. and I were just talking about it a lot um, for the last hour before we were recording. And, you know, I don't think either of us need to cry again or get into it. But yeah, I think we can just be grateful and hug our loved ones that we have right now and mm-hmm. and just wish and hope um, and pray for, you know, a more peaceful world for our children. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. I think that's what I love about recording this podcast with you is like, yeah, I like to share it with other people for sure. Um but it is like such a nice escape from everything. And that's, I mean, that's what originally drew us to these books and then why we were so obsessed with talking about it yeah. loudly in public places. <laughs> just because it's just, it just brings me so much joy. And when life feels like shit, it's like, I know I have this. Yeah. And that helps a lot. I know. It's just such an escape. Like, yeah. we just have so much fun doing it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it brings other people joy. Like when you bring that energy of like being open-minded, being vulgar, talking about sex, like, yeah. Some people clam up and really don't like it, but yep. those aren't our people. And then other people just like light up and they love it and they get engaged and that's exactly. a cool thing to watch. Totally. Yeah. So tell me your rose and thorn. Um, so my big rose is I saw Magic Mike live this weekend in Vegas. So jealous. Oh my God. <laughs> was it amazing? I don't want to spoil it because there's like a little bit of like a rick a rick moment where it kind of like shifts gears and I don't want to ruin that for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. But it was fucking brilliant. The dancing was so fucking cool. There was one dance done in water. Like they had like what? fake rain coming down. They danced in the water. It was super sexy. The girl's body was insane. The guy was obviously gorgeous. Got me a little jolty, which I was kind of surprised by. Um, and very open to. Um, but like they just, I mean, it wasn't a huge, it wasn't like a stadium, right? It's like a smaller venue, but you know, there's multiple tiers. And I just feel like they made every single woman in that venue feel seen, feel sexy, feel included. Um, I did get a little grindy grind action. Um, I thought I was going to be a lot cooler. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You were pulled up on stage? I wasn't pulled up on stage. Oh. No, thank Christ. This <laughs> one, they like went around to everyone and basically just like bam, 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 like did a little dance on each person. Oh, like when they bring you a, a towel at the end of a yoga class and everyone gets their minute. <laughs> Everyone gets their five seconds. To get your little essential oil spritz exactly. and a towel. That's kind of what it was like. Yeah. Um, but there was like, he was like doing it with my friend. Not doing it. He was grinding on my friend and dancing. And I was like, oh, what a lucky bitch. And then all of a sudden I feel my stool get pulled. Yes. Uh, the stool I was sitting on, to be specific. <laughs> they weren't that invasive. <laughs> the stool I was sitting on. Um, gets yoinked and suddenly he's like pulling my legs around his waist. (gasps) And I imagine it, it felt for him like what it would be like dancing with a life size Barbie doll where I was so stiff and rigid. (laughs) 
And he's like trying to get me to like rub his chest. But as I did, I could feel the little prickles like he didn't shave, you know, Mm. so it was like a little prickly. (laughs) And like, I just, I just knew the whole time. This is why like I've never enjoyed strip clubs. Um, Specifically, I'm like, I know you're not into this. Oh yeah. I know grinding against me, one of 30 women you have to hit down the line you're like thinking about your grocery list. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I just, I kept wanting to apologize. It's like when I dislocated my finger and I kept apologizing to the doctors, like, I know you don't want to be here. <laughs> really or like sorry. that time when we were at the nail salon. Did we already tell this story? No. I would tell it again, even if we had. We were at the nail salon and we, were, we both had pedicures, but they were also doing Amanda's manicure at the, you know, pedicure station. And the woman cuts Amanda <laughs> and Amanda's bleeding. And I look over and I was like, Amanda, you're bleeding. And she looks at the woman. She goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? And the woman's like, this was on you. I, I barely touched anything. You're uh-huh. bleeding on me. You're bleeding on me. And Amanda was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I was like, um, can you not apologize to her right now? <laughs> like, even if, you know, you don't, you don't need to be rude. Even if you don't say anything. Yeah. Don't apologize. <laughs> My skin got in the way of her scissors. That your skin got in the way of her fucking scissors. And she was like, this wasn't me. I didn't do this. <laughs> I don't love this part of me, but she's here and she's not leaving. So she was not pleased with the, with the 18-year-old grinding against me. And I just wanted to apologize to him the whole time. Yeah. So I didn't love that. And I just, I wanted to be cooler, but we just, he and I didn't have the chemistry. You mm, know? Wasn't there. Uh, wasn't there. Um... But it was just like, it was so much fun. Okay, I, I really hope I get to go with you one day. Yeah, my throat was killing me the next oh, morning. Oh, from yelling? I'm screaming. <laughs> I mean, I lost my shit multiple times. Tell me you so like good. threw your underwear on stage. Oh, I wish. <laughs> You'd be kicked out probably. I was wearing underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're so sexy. <laughs> Scandalous. Uh, anyway, that was my bros. I really like, everyone should go see it. It is truly made for women. Um, actually there were a lot of gay men too, but it just wasn't like yucky, gross stripper stuff. It was like, that's exactly honestly so nice to hear because I'm yeah. shocked. I would have just thought that it was like yucky, gross, really mm-hmm. not going to do anything for you. And, oh, it did it. Oh, it did. It did it. You were ready to get home and see your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to get home with the three other women I was staying yeah. with and uh, pass out and not touch anyone. Um, and then for thorns... I don't know. I'm in like a book rut that's like actually been affecting me. Like I just can't find anything that's like doing it. That's doing it for me. Yeah. 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 So I've been watching a lot of Love is Blind. Yeah. A lot of Vampire Diaries just to really fill that void. I know. I'm still behind on Love is Blind, but I will catch up to you one day. Oh my God. We have so much to talk about. We should start a Love is Blind podcast. Oh God. There's probably a million and a half. I know. I just, I can't. I can't do it. This is enough for me. This is <laughs> this is my where bucket my, is full. This is where my passion lies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it, shall we? Yeah. Okay, so today I am doing the synopsis. You're doing the book club questions. Um, so as a reminder, this is Bite of Loyalty by R.L. Calder. So Bite of Loyalty is the first book in the Blood Oath series. It is a paranormal romance novel with hints of reverse harem, which we'll get to kind of when we get into the thick of the conversation. Um, It follows the story of Alina Van Helsing, the daughter of the powerful vampire slayer Van Helsing family. At the start of the book, we find Alina dancing and basically just getting super fucked up at a club with her other slayer friends as she's trying to avoid her inevitable arranged marriage to another slayer. In Ordinarius, the land where they live, Um, arranged marriages between slayers is customary so they can create more and more slayer babies to help fortify their land on the ongoing war against vampires. She is dreading this inevitable ceremony as she is a strong, badass, independent woman who needs no man. Mm, mm, mm. However, when she leaves the club, she receives a series of messages that there has been an attack. And when she finally gets home, she sees that not only have her friends and family been slaughtered, but her mother was actually turned by a vampire. Alina is forced to slay her own mom before she transitioned, um, which obviously devastates her. And as she mourns these horrific losses, vampires catch her off guard and end up turning her as well. After some more truly tragic shit goes down, I don't want to spoil too, too much. Mm -hmm. um, 
Because she is now a vampire, Alina is forced to leave her homeland and sets off on a quest to avenge her family's death by killing Dracula, the leader of Sanguis, the vampire territory, um, and the man she believes ordered the attack on her family. As soon as she leaves, Alina is immediately scouted by Estrid, who is the headmistress of the Dark Imaginarium <laughs> Academy. Um, so the Dark Imaginarium Academy um, is a training academy for vampires and other paranormal beings. Despite hating vampires, including now herself. So a lot of this book is her dealing with uh, now being um, a monster that she's always been uh, taught to hate and, yeah. and kill. Um, she agrees to enroll in this academy for two main reasons. One, she has no other options. She literally has no home. She's not permitted to go back to Ordinarius without being killed by the Slayers. And two, if she becomes the top student, she'll be eligible to work directly under Dracula, thus giving her the access she needs to kill him. So she's like, dope, I'll do it. And within like 30 seconds of being at the school, she meets two men with whom she has immediate sexual connections. The first is Lincoln, her surly and sexy combat professor, who both hates Alina for being a slayer because slayers slaughtered his parents and totally gets bony for her during like every single interaction they have. Um, so there's kind of, it's an enemies to lovers kind of vibe between the two of them. Yeah. And, and gets, of course, our favorite power dynamic yes. teacher to student we do love a teacher Ugh, to student we really do yeah um and it has my other favorite dynamic which is miscellaneous boners yes because he has them all the time with her <laughs> um and then the second guy is i'm gonna say his name is andre that's how i was saying okay it. it's a-n-d-r-e-i it's andre it's andre <laughs> okay fight us about it <laughs> uh andre who's her arrogant classmate who presents as a total douche but actually turns out to be very sweet and hunky and protective of her. Yeah. As Alina tries to juggle her growing feelings for both men, which minds you, like, this entire book happens in the first 48 hours of her being there. Yeah, literally. Um, she is confronted. <laughs> it is very quick. <laughs> and they say things like, I've always wanted this for you, or you've always made me feel this way. And I'm yeah. like, you mean yesterday? <laughs> when you met? Yesterday? <laughs> okay. Um, anywho, as her feelings grow, she is confronted with an unexpected visitor, Dracula, who ends up throwing a penis-shaped wrench in her whole plan for revenge. <laughs> Amanda was so proud of herself for writing that last sentence. <laughs> it took you me longer have, to write you, that sentence than the entire sentence. You should have seen her. When she just said that last sentence, penis shaped wrench she literally <laughs> did her a little shoulder shimmy with each <laughs> syllable <laughs> sure did <laughs> oh dracula if you want to see how this story ends please pause here and go read bite of loyalty it's a short read with lots and lots of sexy buildup. yeah and it ends on a really great cliffhanger yes um it made me start the second book i actually i did read the second book yeah um I forget how many there are. We'll have to let you know at the end. But there's a few books. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into our questions. Okay. So tell me, what did you think about the reverse harem shaping up? Were you into it? Yeah, I mean, I was actually... Well, so actually, I'm sorry. I just asked you the question. Now I'm going to pause. <laughs> for everyone, <laughs> let me answer that for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, just so that everyone knows, what is a reverse harem? Yeah. A reverse harem is... Numerous guys, one girl. Mm -hmm. A normal harem is numerous girls, one guy. So yeah. just to clarify, that mm -hmm. is what a reverse harem is. And now, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, so at first I was surprised when I was Googling this book that reverse harem even came up because it's really, I feel like this first book in terms of the reverse harem is setting the stage for future books. Mm -hmm. So it's alluded to, but it's not really shown. Yeah. Um. So I honestly, okay. I liked it. It's what kept me interested. Yeah. What I have learned about myself is when they go straight to sex in books, yeah. I am just, I need the foreplay, I right? Know. So immediately going to Lincoln's perspective and the, one of the first sentences from his perspective is like, all I could think about was her lips around my cock. And yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Like you kind of ruined it for me because now it's just like overtly sexual. There isn't much of a buildup. So I was kind of like, blah, blah, yeah, they're probably going to fuck. But then when she started to have feelings for Andre, that's when I like perked up a little bit. And I was like, oh, I was not expecting that. Mm. Because they present him like he's like this disgusting douchebag. Because yeah. the first thing he says to her is like, 
she bumps into him and he's like, I'll forgive you if you get on your knees. Like, he's just like, gross. Yeah. But I was intrigued that she kept coming back to him. Mm-hmm. So so I think... The, the yeah, re- like inexplicably, she wasn't sure why she was so drawn to yes. him. Yes. Yeah. So I think the reverse harem is actually... Or the setting up of a reverse harem is what was interesting to me because the initial love connection, I was like, ugh. It happened too It happened much. so fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? I agree, actually. So... Reverse harem is my favorite. <laughs> a little bit of an expert. I'm a little bit of an expert in this um, arena, let me just tell you. <laughs> but I agree tenfold that my issue with this book was it all happened way too quickly. I was like, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. I need so much more of a slow burn. Yes. And I had just come off of a big series of like six or seven books. It was all a reverse harem and it happened with such a great slow burn arc mm-hmm. and so much character development before mm-hmm. all this sexual stuff happened that then going to this, I was like, oh my God, this happened in one split second. Yes. Yeah. I might not have felt that way as much if I hadn't just come off of this other series, mm-hmm. you know, and again, I'm just so used to reading reverse harem books because I, I do really like that style. Um, so I would say I really was looking for more of a slow burn also. But I do love a reverse harem. Mm-hmm. I was I was excited for it. The cliffhanger yep. at the end really had me going there too. Yes. Um. Yeah. So sign me up any day. <laughs> sign me up. I think I was thinking about this. To for me, in terms of romanticy, the goat really is Akatar yeah. books one and two mm. because. There's such a fucking buildup. I know. And I, I don't think I need to hear the perspective of the man. And I don't mean that in a sexist way. Sure. Because it just goes to sex so quickly. True. But I think in their mind, it's because for so many women, it's just validation. Mm-hmm. Hearing those man slots just being how much they want her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand where they're coming from because it's just yeah. like pure sex. Like you are pure sex appeal. Everything mm-hmm. about you is sexy. You're talking to me and all I can see is how gorgeous your lips are and that I want them on my dick. Like, yeah. And for yeah. so many women, I think that's just such a turn on because it's like, oh my God, like they're so enraptured and distracted mm-hmm. by me because I'm so hot. Like, yeah. fuck the intellectual part. <laughs> <laughs> but do I understand your perspective? Yes. Yeah. I think I just want to be kept in the dark. Like I liked the reveal of like the in the first book of Akatar, like being like, you know, because you don't really hear Tamlin's perspective. You don't really know what he's thinking of her yeah. right and then same with rice and in the second book like i mean obviously you know he's attracted to her but but you're left in the dark so much about about how much he loves her and you just want to keep you want to keep going mystery. to figure it out there's yeah. just enough mystery versus just like i want your lips on my dick i know, <laughs> you know? Like, I like i guess there's no mystery there yeah okay. exactly <laughs> cool so i wonder when her lips are going to be on his dick yeah but yeah, but I thought. But going back to your question, I thought the reverse harem detail was like a little, a little surprise. Yeah, I know because you don't typically read those books. No, and I didn't know that's what this was. <laughs> I didn't see <laughs> the evil I until after. You. <laughs> yeah, Actually, I knew you'd get me into no, this world. You recommended this book. <laughs> I did. <Yes. laughs> I tricked me. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, did you find yourself being drawn more to either of the male characters versus the other? Hmm. Yeah, honestly, I liked Andre more. But, like, he wore necklaces. He he was repulsive. <laughs> I don't know what came over me, um, so to speak. Like, there was the scene where he's, like, jerking it outside oh under God, a lamppost. it. <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin that. That's coming later. <laughs> but, like, that was so repulsive because I just pictured him, like, sweating. You know, like, disgusting. Like, <clears throat> you know. Um, no, picture it like the show You, where he's watching her masturbate in season one and he's like oh, jerking yeah, it on that's the right steps. that's what was happening <laughs> that is so much better yes so much better <laughs> um but i there was a little bit more of a slow burn there there was that and was he's sweeter he was a lot sweeter. he's much more protective and sweet yeah but yeah. similar to how i can't deal with men in pants and flip-flops <laughs> um jewelry is a no Jewelry is a no for me, and like I forgot he wore necklaces. He wore necklaces, and it's it's a no for me. It's a yeah. no dog. It's, it's a, a no, no for dog. me. <laughs> Have you ever dated a guy who wore jewelry? 
Oh my god. <laughs> Are you really gonna make me say this? <laughs> I asked you a question and I knew the answer. <laughs> I can't even tell you guys how much shit my family gives me. <laughs> My ex-boyfriend wore a thumb ring. <laughs> In my mind, I always think it's pinky, and the fact that it's thumb is just such a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Literally, talk about talk about a defining character trait. That's the only thing that people in my family remember about that guy. It's his fucking thumb ring. <laughs> and honestly, those were dark times for me. <laughs> Those were dark times yeah, for me. Yeah. So no. Um. Moving forward, <laughs> there is no jewelry allowed. Yeah. That's wise. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say so. I would say I was drawn more to Lincoln. Mm-hmm. I also am such a sucker for the power play of student teacher. So I'm like, I know. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me. Give mm-hmm. it to me. Yeah. I wish they just made I know, it but a little I do, bit longer. I 100% wish the slow burn between yeah. them was longer. Mm-hmm. But I think I like that you're going with Andre. Yeah. I'm just going to have to go with Lincoln. But and neither of us went straight. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> he wears a three-piece suit and that's repulsive to me. I don't. I can't even picture what that means. Um, jacket, vest, pants. Okay. Or a cummerbund, but I can't imagine he's wearing a cummerbund. <laughs> That doesn't sound ideal, but I'm going to yeah. choose that over necklaces. They're both pretty trashy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like Justin Timberlake wears both of them. Okay. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that is not the guy I'm into, you guys. Nope. <laughs> so, okay. Our next question. Tell me, how do you think Alina handled all the trauma and the subsequent changes to her life so quickly? Were you impressed by her ability to compartmentalize and seek revenge? Or do you feel like this is just a recipe for issues later on? That's a great question. It's a very therapist question. Well, very therapist, right up my alley. <laughs> um, like I thought, it was interesting how they showed her getting triggered repeatedly. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it just kind of felt like it was forgotten because again, all of this happens within seventy-two hours <laughs> of all of the of this trauma going down. Listen. So maybe she's in shock. You yeah. know, I'm not going to tell anyone how they should be traumatized. I just think like um, seeing hot guys and getting their D's is like a really great, yeah. you know, distraction. Yeah. Like it just, I mean, you know, if that's how she needs to cope by yep. just getting railed left and right <laughs> by anyone who walks by her. <laughs> Again, talk about the slow burn. Not only the sl- that do we like a slow burn romance, but the slow burn of coming to terms with the fact that she is now the one creature that her whole life was designed to hate yeah. and to murder. And, you know, within a few hours, she's like, this sucks. But, like, all right, I'll make the best of it. Mm-hmm. Which does not feel as realistic as other kind of paranormal romances we've read. But all that aside, do I think it's impressive that after the most traumatic event of your life that you can, like, be like, okay, here I go. I'm, like, picking up the pieces. I'm on mm-hmm. my own. Here we go. Yeah. Like, yeah. she's badass as hell. Yeah. So... I mean, yeah, like I said, there's no there's no right or wrong way to react to trauma. So some people do just start fucking. Some people do come up with, like, revenge fantasies. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Yeah. Okay. But now, out of the few sex scenes there were in book one, yeah, what was your favorite? Yeah, there was a lot of build-up to sex. So there were a lot of sexy moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of miscellaneous erections. A lot of, like, heavy petting. A lot of, um... Public masturbation. (laughs) Um, I think probably my favorite sex scene, and I won't even take the whole scene, one of my favorite moments is when Lincoln goes down on her for the first time. Only because they kind of vaguely alludes to squirting, which I just haven't come across in a book yet. So again, we're like pretty hardened and jaded because we read so many of these books that a sex scene really has to stand out. And at one point he says, like when he's fingering her, like, you know, when when she orgasmed, she soaked the floor. Yes. And I was like, oh, there's a new little detail. Yeah. It's kind of fun. We're normalizing all these bodily fluids. Yeah, we sure are. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there was a little bit of um, light choking and knife play in the sex scene. So there's just kind of, not my thing, not, but like. Not your bread and butter. Not my bread and butter. <laughs> but uh, it was just like new, like new little details that I haven't come across yet. I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, my favorite sex scene by far is 
a self-pleasuring sex scene. Mm. I thought this was so bold. I was so into it. Um, So basically earlier in the day, Alina and Lincoln have like a kiss, a moment, and then he like freaks out and is like, ugh, no, like bye. Mm -hmm. And so she's pissed because she's like, I know he felt this too. So she's standing in her room and says, you know, basically she's like, she could like feel someone's eyes on her. So it says, boldly, I pulled my curtains back and stepped fully into the frame of my window. I oh, her window curtains. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's funny so far? <laughs> I didn't give myself the opportunity to second guess my decision. Instead, I grabbed the hem of my shirt and began to lift it over my head slowly. I dropped the shirt to, a, to the floor, a secret smile stretching over my lips as I stared into the orb of light circling Lincoln below. His body language screamed, I dare you, and it made my pussy throb with anticipation for how far I knew I would take this. After all, I was never one to back down from a challenge. So honestly, it gets into like, it gets more and more descriptive. I'll, I'll keep going. It's hot as hell. But like <laughs> she eventually, you know, then she's like undoing her bra. She's tossing her hair back, making mm-hmm. it all sexy. Um, she's playing with her nipples all while watching him through her window as he just like gawks at her. Biting his lip, just being Mm -hmm. like, holy shit, holy shit, what am I watching? Um, Okay, so this is even better. So then she is like, I really honestly need to get off. Like, I'm so, like, (laughs) I'm so horny and this is so hot. And so she decides to, like, lay on her bed and give him a full show. It says, my back arched as I dipped two fingers inside, curling them up and working them in and out at the perfect pace. Dropping my other hand to my clit, I swirled it in time with my fingers, moaning as I pictured Lincoln watching me from outside. I'd never forget this moment. It felt like I'd fully accepted the side of myself that existed to rebel against all the damn rules I'd grown up with. The desire to free myself from the high standards that were expected of me as next in line of the Van Helsing house was at the forefront. So basically, she's like literally at her windowsill, spread eagle, Mm -hmm. lying back on her bed, masturbating in front of Lincoln and then when you know it Andre <laughs> that's where she like looks up eventually and sees that Lincoln is gone and Andre standing there like just like rubbing his dick watching her <laughs> that's when Amanda was like I wasn't into that and I was like oh I was <laughs> and um, she was kind of too um she was so into it yeah and dude that scene was so hot like yeah it was can you it imagine was. having that level of confidence to mm-hmm. spread eagle your legs and touch yourself while two different guys watch you. No, I mean, and so, it's not like, like slow clap for Alina. Yeah, yeah, yeah truly, true. And she was at her window, so anyone could have seen. Totally. Anyone could have walked by. Yeah. And she was still curtains open. Yep. Going to town. All curtains open. All, cur- <laughs> <laughs> All four curtains <laughs> wide open. <laughs> well, and then. I, th- I think that's the scene where a few minutes later she hears Lincoln get back into his room because he's right upstairs. Yes. And then she, because she, she doesn't finish with Link, with uh, Andre no. watching. So then she finishes while he finishes and they both are like screaming each other's names. Yeah, she's like, she hears a knock at her door and she's like, what the hell? And looks up and sees Lincoln is not there anymore, but Andre is. And she's like, mm, whatever, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. And then she hears Lincoln, who lives right above her masturbating and saying her name over and over. And she's yeah. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought it was so hot. I think it's very rare to see masturbation in books, especially female masturbation. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of the time when I have seen it, it's like the male forcing the woman to masturbate. Not mm-hmm. even like like super, super forcing, but just like, come on, like touch yourself for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they're for me. Yeah, yeah, they're both yeah. into it. But like never has it really been the woman on her own being the instigator, being mm-hmm. like, this is bringing me so much pleasure and fun and like I'm just having a really grand old time doing this. Yeah. So yeah. I was so impressed with her confidence. I thought that the way the author described the entire thing was so sexy. Mm-hmm. Like all the details were so on point. Yeah. Um, so that's like probably going to stick with me because I really haven't seen it like that. It made me think of what we talked about, um, in our last podcast about, uh, kind of my theory that sometimes authors feel like they have to justify all the sex that the female is having by like making them fall in love and have babies and have a family. Right. And this book, I thought one thing I really liked was like, she just fucked and she 
didn't apologize. She, even though the guys were possessive of her, she really didn't like buy into it. Um, she wasn't totally callous about it, but you know, she, there was no sense of like, oh, I have to be loyal to, specifically to this guy because this guy I have sexual chemistry with. Yeah. Um, she just kind of had fun and embraced her sexuality a lot, which I thought, you know, I really, really liked. Which that's really funny because my last question was, what did you think about how open Alina was with her sexuality? Oh, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly we both are like, you know, bravo. Yeah, I mean, like, from how she dressed to how she would hold herself in front of people. Um, you know what's interesting? I just, like, don't really relate to these strong feminist women. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, honestly, I feel like there's so many books I read where I'm like, yeah, no, if that happened to me, I just want to be, like, coddled, taken care of, <laughs> pampered. Like, I can't relate to the, like, I'm picking myself back up, I'm getting revenge I'm doing this for me I'm going to war I'd be like yeah no like I just met a man who'll take care of me that sounds great <laughs> that sounds, just gives me a lot of time yeah, like even like Feyre and Akatar, like you know I'm yeah. like no 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 like g- like go you girl like you're one of my favorite characters of all time mm-hmm. do I see myself doing that no no yeah. you know if I meet a rich guy that's going to take care of me I'm going to be taken care of <laughs> <laughs> Tamla sounded great he honestly sounded <laughs> wonderful and even you know, like, sometimes the male characters are a little too feminist for me. Where yes, they're like, agreed. You know, you can do this, like, equal to me. Like, yep, let's do it together. I would be like, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I was not looking for that answer. Yeah, you're going to literal war. <laughs> <laughs> can you just, like, tell me to stay back? And not, like, you love me and, like, there's a stockpile of food in the pantry? <laughs> it's kind of like when you go... When, like, you and your husband go out and he takes out his wallet. Or, like, maybe not husband, but when you were dating. Yeah. And you would, like, pretend to go, like, oh, I'll pay. And you kind of, like, fake go. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Yeah. That's how I want to be treated. Like, oh, I'll go to war with you. No, 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 no. no. Exactly. Oh, okay. No. And then it was, like, if they did say, yeah, we'll split it. You were, like, okay, we're never having another date. Like, absolutely not. That was a test. I I just felt my hymen grow back. was a test. (laughs) You failed the test. Stop thinking that we are equals. (laughs) I am beneath you. (laughs) I am beneath you and I would like to be treated as such. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'm like so impressed with Alina. So so great. So great. I also love her body confidence. Oh, me too. Uh, Because at one point she's just standing there naked talking to Lincoln, not realizing that she's naked. Yep, yep. And uh, and then she realizes it and she's just like, well, here we are. Mm -hmm. Like, vag out. Yep. And literally what's sexier than that to a guy? Nothing. I know. I know. I was thinking like in Vegas, I was wearing a shirt that if I lifted both arms up at the same time, yeah. my um, it would raise up enough that you could see my belly button. Uh-huh. And I just kept walking around the hotel room with my friends being like, is this too much belly button? Like raising my <laughs> hand. They were like, well, when would you be raising your hand like that? Like you're, like you're on a fucking roller coaster. You know, and also like no one's, no one, you're in Vegas. Everyone yeah. has their tits out. I mean, I don't know why this is my first thought because it's not how you would dress, but I thought you were going to say if you raise both your arms up, you would see your under boob. <laughs> So again, perspective. Yeah. If I raise my arms up and maybe jumped a little bit, you could see my little, little bit. my little Nemo under boob. <laughs> What's a Nemo under boob? My Nemo is my smaller boob. <laughs> <laughs> like Nemo's little fin. You know what? Everyone has a bigger one and everyone has a smaller yeah. one. If you try to deny it, you're a liar. You're a fucking liar. Get out of here. <laughs> or they're fake. Your Nemo boob. I was like, do you have like a fin? Like, <laughs> was, so I was, weird. I was so confused. No, it's just my little tiny boob. Oh, your little Nemo. <laughs> my little Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, what were we talking about? Sexuality. Yeah, I loved it. You know it. what? We love Alina. So I yeah. think I think we're good here, you know? This was a good book. Yeah. But how what would you how would you rate how it? How would I rate it? Okay, honestly, I'm struggling to remember because I did keep reading the rest of the series. So if I'm, I'm trying to think of just book one. Yeah. Um, book one ends with her wrestling with Dracula. What is wrestling? Like wrestling. Like you mean they're wrestling? Like, they're like they're, yeah, but it's a uh, southern razzle dazzle. <laughs> just kind of like it's like it's like fake wrestling, like wrestling. Just is that tumbling. a real word? They said it on Buffy once. <laughs> So, yeah, deal with you. you tell me. Okay, we're going to go with a wrestling. I think this would be a really good starter book for someone yeah. who wants more of a of a paranormal universe mm-hmm. and start into reverse harem. I think 
I think would actually be a really good book for people that want both of those things to see yeah. what they think. Um, because so many of the other ones I've read are just, I think a lot of times reverse harems tend to be way darker. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why, you know what I mean? Well, and that's me. Like, I think I totally agree with that. Cause whenever you've talked about reverse harems, I've been like, Ye. yeah, exactly. But this, it was a surprise. I wasn't expecting it, but it was what got me interested. Yeah. So I, totally. I think that's totally fair. And then for sexiness, I mean, I'm giving that masturbation scene like a nine to nine and a half. Yeah, sexiness was good. Like that was amazing. Yeah. Um, and the rest of it, I just, I don't remember as many of those sex scenes because I kept reading. But there weren't a lot of sex scenes. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? I'm giving it a nine and a half. I'm giving it a nine and a half. Wow. Purely for the masturbation scene. Mm. I thought it was incredible. Yeah. Also, this reminded me. I don't know why, but every time I see hashtag DNF, I always think, don't fuck with me. <laughs> and that, like... Very different letters, no, but like, yeah. I literally feel like so old. Like, well, I don't know why that... Like, do DNF, do not fuck, and then I just add with me. Oh, You know what I mean? Was that ever a thing, or are you just making it up? No, I made it up. Why is it so hard for me? I don't... Because you've never not finished know, a book. I've literally never... <laughs> it's literally every single time I just see it as... Do not fuck with me. <laughs> Anyways, um, that was random. And I just wanted to close with that. Thank you so much. So, guys, our next episode, we are going to be covering the book called Revved Up by May Harden. Mm-hmm. Neither of us have read this book. We're Mm-mm. super excited to read it. I honestly couldn't even tell you what it's about because I have not uh, downloaded it yet. So, no. Mm-mm. all we know is that it's called Revved Up. The author is May Harden. She follows us on Instagram. So hey, May. Shout out. And we're super excited to read her book. And that will be live on December 4th because our podcasts come out every other Monday. Right. Yes. So every time we're like, okay, see you next week, it's actually a lie because it's see you every two weeks. <laughs> and even that's a lie because you're not like seeing us, you're hearing us. But you know mm, what I you know, yeah, You're getting in the weeds We're there. really getting in the Semantics. weeds. Exactly. So that's it. That's it tonight. Yeah. All right. I love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's Kayla jumping back on. Super exciting is that R.L. Calder answered a bunch of Amanda and I's author questions so that we could share them with our listeners. So I want to go ahead and read some of the things that she told us about her writing, how she got into this process, and a little bit more about Bite of Loyalty. She started writing in the spring of 2020, right as the world was shutting down for COVID, and she says it was her comfort genre to read, and that's why she started writing. Uh, She says her favorite trope is enemies to lovers. I think we all probably could have guessed that based on this book. And she doesn't really have a least favorite trope. She's pretty open to everything. What is one of her hopes for readers when they finish her books? She says it's that They feel seen in her characters in one way or another. Mental health is a running theme in the majority of my books. I hope they close the last chapter in a book feeling warm and safe. I really love that. We asked, are people in your life supportive of your passion for writing this? And she said, very. Every single family member and friend that knows is very supportive. I'm very lucky in that regard to feel no shame from them. We asked, if you could write any other kind of story outside of romance, what would it be? She said, if it's not romance, then I don't want it as a reader or an author. I love love. It makes me feel giddy and happy, and we need more happiness in the world. We asked, did you have a favorite sexy scene from Bite of Loyalty and why? She said, this is tough. I really love each of her first sex scenes with each of the men because it really showcases their individual connections and kinks. Finding their dynamics for the first time in those scenes is always so fun to explore. However, the shower scene in book three is a fan favorite, and I am inclined to agree. And last but not least, we said, what was your inspiration for Alina Van Helsing? Did you see yourself in her at all? And she said, Alina is 100,000% me through and through. Her inability to process trauma and cope in a healthy way completely stems from myself. She's headstrong and sassy like myself, but we also know when to admit we're in the wrong when push comes to shove. Her path of learning to go from a hardened woman that felt she needed to prove herself to the world to a softer, loving person who found the only validation she ever needed comes from within is a journey I'm also on. Wow, that is really beautiful. And thank you for sharing that, R.L. Calder. That means a lot. Um, And, you know, Amanda and I actually, that was one of the questions we had for each other was, 
was if we thought Alina did a good job coping or if she was kind of, uh, you know, boxing herself off just to move forward with her life. And it's so fascinating to see that, that Rachel Calder saw herself in her and knew exactly, of course, how she was writing this character. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit more in depth from the author herself. And we hope to have you join us for our next episode. Bye, guys. Thank you for being a part of our Erotically Neurotic community. Don't forget to email your book recommendations, book club questions, and or any erotic stories, embarrassing moments, or sexual triumphs you want to share. Email us at eroticallyneuroticpodcast at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram at eroticallyneuroticpodcast. Hi there, Amanda here. I think it's worth noting that any and all thoughts shared in these episodes are a reflection of my own personal and constantly evolving opinions and not that of my profession or licensing board. While I am a therapist, I am not your therapist. Therefore, nothing I say in this podcast should be taken as therapy advice or guidance. Thank you so much for being a part of our sexy book club and tune in next week for our next episode.